Hi, this is Emily in the Swedish forest. My channel name is Emily Learning Bushcraft. Right now you're watching my friend Nick at Whitetail Bushcraft. Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of Whitetail Bushcraft. Here in the woods by the farm, we're going to cook us up some venison harvest stew, so stay tuned. Gonna get us a fire going and we are gonna cook up some venison harvest stew. We've got a beautiful day today. Can't believe it's February 20th. Do you believe? And we're going to get up to 60 degrees today. Works for me. Let me get this fire going. And like I say, we're going to cook us up some stew today. to show you what I brought out today. We're going to start out, we're going to make a stew, but we're going to grill the stew meat first. And this is a venison rump roast cut into steaks, and then we'll cube it up after the fact. 
kind of waiting to get the grill ready, get it good and hot, and we'll throw these bad boys on there, get started with this stew. Right now we want the high heat because all we're going to do is sear them. We're not trying to cook them right now, we're just trying to get that good campfire flavor on them. And then we'll cube these up and add them to the stew. Man, that's good looking steaks. Give you guys a close up of that. Get them bad boys seared and we'll start getting going on the stew. I also brought out a nice soup beef bone from the cattle off this uh, property and we're going to add that right in the pot to start creating our beef stock for the stew. About time to flip these bad boys. Oh yeah, look at that beautiful sear. Beautiful. Put that sear on both sides. And we'll uh, take them off the fire to get them cubed up. While them are searing, you know me, I like to cook healthy. I brought a half a stick of butter to help make our roux. Easiest way to go camping with that, freeze it first, put it in your pack. By the time you get out there, you're ready to roll. All right. These are seared enough. That's where we'll get these ready to be cubed. Get that nice smoky flavor to it. That's part of your seasoning right there. That's what our meat looks like so far. Alright, looks like our pan's ready for our soup bone. Oh yeah. And that's going to help with our stock. And we're going to start cutting up some onions to go in with that. Get this stew on the go. Brought three onions out with me. A couple of pearl onions, good sized pearl onions. Nice sweet onion. This is going to be a nice chunky stew. Love the more knives for cooking, especially the stainless steel one. Easy to clean. It's probably about ready to turn. And this meat will break down too and be part of the stew. And I also brought out a nice pepper just for some flavoring.
We're going to let them, them onions caramelize up some. I think I'm going to put the lid on it. I'm going to transfer these steaks over to the cutting board. This would be the best stew you ever ate. Definitely try this one, guys. And you can try this at home. It don't have to be out on a campfire, but campfire seems to flavor it better. And I have another whole nother recipe for a stew with venison that you can do indoors. See how these onions and soup bones looking again. See if we're ready to start adding more ingredients. Oh yeah. God, if you guys could smell it. I think we're about ready. So what we're going to do next, start cubing up the uh, venison steak. After we grilled it. Now this is a very easy recipe, but it doesn't isn't something you can do quickly. Take some stages and then we're going to let it simmer for an hour or so. Then go walking around looking for some antler sheds. And uh and enjoy a great meal. All right, what we're going to start doing now, start cubing this up in the one inch squares, inch and a half squares. Don't have to be perfect, a nice bite size. And like I say, this isn't even close to being cooked, this meat. I mean, it's super, super rare. As you can see probably in the camera how pink that is. But it's got that nice grilled smoky flavor. And this will tenderize up even more as it simmers. Got plenty of deer meat here. And I actually put a little piece on the grill there to eat too while I'm waiting because I'm getting so hungry because it smells so good. But before we throw this in, I'm going to add some water in there and a little trick I'll show you guys to making the easiest and the best tasting stew you ever had. Looking me. All right. What we're going to add now is some water, just to break down all that stuff stuck to the bottom of the pan. Get all that yummy goodness. Right now, we'll probably add maybe a third of a canteen. That'll break all that stuff loose. Already see it starting to make a nice brown roux. Look at that. And we'll cut this soup bone up too once it starts tenderizing and breaking down. Hope that camera's picking up that nice roux. And we're going to start adding the venison steak right in there. vegetables. And I got a little piece of steak right here I'm getting ready to eat and chomp on. For now, we'll keep that at a slow simmer. And we'll start getting the vegetables ready. Time to start adding some vegetables in this. And what I got, look at that bubbling. There's about a dozen baby carrots, the good sweet baby carrots. I'm gonna throw them in whole. Mix them right in. We're gonna have to start adding some more water. We'll do that right now.
We're going to start adding our potatoes. I brought four small potatoes out, just yellow potatoes. And we're going to leave them big and chunky, skins and all. I see so many people throw away the skins, and I think it's such a waste. You know, nothing fancy. I'm just going to cut these up into big chunks and add these right to our stew. All the nutrients and everything are in that skin, so we definitely want that. I'm going to add about four of these to them. Oh, if you guys could smell this. I'm sure you've seen me cut potatoes up before. Looking good. Get them all down in there. See that root just building up beautiful. Look at that. Add a little more water. This dish takes about a canteen full. Almost forgot, guys. I always add two cloves of garlic to this, too. That's part of our seasoning. And I just pretty much throw them in whole. Two full whole garlic cloves. And it definitely, you can add salt and pepper, and I will add salt and pepper to this, you know, seasoned to your liking. Now we just let her simmer a good hour or so. Just keep checking it. And when it's done, it's done. All right. This stuff's been stewing for a good half hour to 40 minutes. You can see it's just looking great. It's probably going to, by the potatoes, I'm guessing another half hour. But what I like to do before the last half hour is to add a little bit of flour in there to thicken this up. And it, in my flour, I already added some uh, spices. I added some garlic powder, uh, some hot pepper flakes, pepper, salt. Just a good mixture of hillbilly spices. And we'll get that flour ready to go here. And I'll show you a little trick when adding that flour to your stew. But man, is that stuff looking good. And you can see how that soup bone broke down, the meat around it. And I went ahead and cut it up, added it in there too. I see a lot of people just throw flour directly into their stew and which end up then with just big clumps of flour and it's really hard to break down a little extra work to even to break it down. What I like to do is put my flour in there, I don't know, a quarter of a cup for a stew, stew this size. Keep adding a little water to it and start mixing yourself up a slurry. You don't want it doughy. You want it to where it'll pour out of the cup. You see how that's doing up. Just keep adding a little water to it until you get a nice consistency that you can pour it back out of this cup. And then add it to your stew. And give it a nice thickened stew and flavor. Like I said, you can probably see the pepper flakes and stuff floating around in there. I already added some spices to that. Don't have to add a lot of salt to this, just because we use butter there as part of the roux when we uh, seared the uh, soup bone. Look at that. See how it's turning into like a thick, 
milk. It's, you, know, you don't have to use all of that, you know, use it to your tasting. But just get you a nice slurry going, and then when you go to mix it in with your stew, it's going to work a lot better for you. We'll go ahead and start putting that in there because, like I say, I think we got about a half an hour to go on this stew. Alrighty. Oh, that's that looks good. I'm probably going to add about half of that. You can see how it gives it that pretty beige color now. As this cools, it'll thicken quite a bit too. And now you don't end up with all them big clumps. A little camping trick. But like I say, this will be the best and easiest campfire venison stew you ever made. So definitely try this at home, guys. Go ahead and add some more of that. Rock and roll. And look at that. Just all natural root, just from that beef bone and the butter and the onions and stuff breaking. Right, guys this thing's been simmering probably a good hour and 15 minutes and what I'm gonna do now is add the last thing and one reason why I call it the harvest stew you harvest your apples uh, you harvest the deer right from this property um, believe it or not guys it's an apple your body craves that sweet and sour and salty and this just adds a great touch to the stew kind of makes it stand out from other stews um, one thing though, you don't want to put that in right away. Maybe the last 10, 15 minutes of you uh, cooking the stew, that way they'll still be snappy and crisp and uh, give off a nice sweet taste to them. And, you know, any kind of apple you like. I like to use the red ones. And we're going to start cutting this up and adding it right to the stew. I like to put them in nice small squares when I do add it to the stew. We're just going to start cutting these up into small squares, not too big, not too small. And like I said, you want to add them in right at the end there so they don't get mushy on you. You want them still crisp. And believe me, this will really put a pizzazz to your uh, stew, guys. Let's see how many we're going to need here. Oh, that stew's looking great. the stew. You know, for this size stew, that was probably about a half an apple. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Maybe two-thirds of an apple. I'm going to add a little bit more. Just enough to give it that color and flavor. And I like skins and all. I see so, so many people throw away skins to different vegetables and fruit. That's where all the good stuff is. Give you a close up of that. Put the lid back on for another 10 15, and it'll be time for the old taste test. Time to open this up, see what she looks like. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Now, don't that look good, guy? You guys can smell this. This will be the best stew you ever ate. And believe me, those apples put that little pizzazz in there. Just like I say, it's everything your body craves that sweet and salty mixed together. Time to start dishing some of this up. Alright, time for the old 
little taste test. I'm messing around using a cup to get me a bowl of this. Oh, if you guys could smell this. Get some of them apples in there. I gotta get you guys a close up of that. Who's that hot? Now that's a bowl of stew right there. Well guys, time for the old taste test. Make sure I get some of them apples. Some of that meat in there. You know what I'm going to say, guys. Oh, son. You just don't get no better than that. I'm Nick with Whitetail Bushcraft. Thanks for joining me on another cooking episode. Thanks for always being out there. Thanks for subscribing. Please like. I'll catch you on the next video. Join us too. Also, want to give a shout out to High Power Outdoors. A man out of Pennsylvania, he's got a great site. Big fan of his channel. So if you guys got time, please go check it out.